Hello everyone. I hope you are having a good time. So let's uh, welcome you to I welcome you to CP to PY. So this is CSF triple one course that we have parallel with Python. So first off, let me introduce by saying that why am I making these videos in the first place, right? So it is going to be almost an year since we have been here on campus, and almost every time that a tech talk or an event occurs, we are told to learn Python. But there hasn't been much done to teach Python or even introduce people to it, except for a CTE course. These videos aim to help you to get started with Python and know about it to the extent that you can match up our CSF Triple One syllabus using it. We are highly encouraged to go beyond this and look up to other uh, deeper courses so that you know much more and can do cool things or things that matter uh, using Python. So this is just an introductory course to help you begin with. Now is the ideal time for me to make these videos, as I do not think that I'll remember C for too long, and hence would be unable to correlate. And also the ideal time for people to watch, as they now have an understanding of one language and can get a hold of Python a bit more easily. Right. So let's begin. First off, open up your terminal. I assume that you are on Linux, and I hope that you are, uh, provided the bashing that we got at the beginning of the semester. Open up your terminal using Control Alt T and type Python three. Now Python 2.7 and 3.5 come preloaded with Ubuntu 16.04, but if for some reason you do not have it, please go to this link and get it installed. Right? Now what we have here is the Python interactive shell. Note that this is the Python interpreter, whereas we compile C programs. The basic difference is that an interpreter translates the program one statement at a time, but a compiler, on the other hand, scans the entire program and translates it as a whole to machine code. So in the CP lab at 550, when you do GCC lab part A dot C, you take the whole program at once and compile it and you get the output, right? So, but this is an interpreter. So hence now, as we type the statements in this terminal, every statement will be executed once enter is hit and that information will be retained in subsequent statements. We'll see this as we move on, right? We'll use the in interactive interpreter shell for now but later we'll move to writing the whole program in one .py file and then running it at once like we do for C programs. So you might have figured it out by now that both uh, that C Python programs can be both compiled and interpreted. Uh, and also to start off to comment a line in Python, you use the hashtag instead of you use the hashtag instead of the double slashes and to comment out multiple lines, you use triple quotes like you put it inside triple quotes. Fine. So let's begin and we begin by the cliched hello world program, right? So let's get started. So what all you have to write for the hello world program is print hello world. That was simple, right? You aren't supposed to include anything for now for the simple print statement. And this is actually your first program. Uh, you feel that's light, right? No, we'll get to the depths as we move on. Please do not use a semicolon. Python does not use semicolon. We'll go through a lot of indentation as we move along, but there aren't any semicolons. So I've done this in a lot of time in my CP lab. So yes, you can know why Python does not use semicolon by going to this link. I won't be telling it, it would extend the video. Now let's look a little deeper into the output print function, right? So what you're supposed to do now is print a variable. Let's assign one and then declare one first. A equals 11 print a uh, you notice something weird right we didn't say int a equals 11 and you're not supposed to you must not specify the variable type in python why because python is smart it auto detects what type of variable it is by seeing the value that we are storing you can check that python knows what it is doing by typing type and variable name we get an output of int right so it tells you that the val because of the value that we stored that is 11 Python itself assigned integer data type to variable A. Now you can play around by assigning B equals 14.5 and seeing its type, it will return float. So you do not tell Python what data type it is, right? Uh, let's move a little further and print this. Uh, the value of A is 11 is our goal to print, but we won't be hard coding 11 per se, right? So the statement goes like this, print the value of a is plus str a plus i'm just doing this so that you know that we can further add more strings after that and further variables also can be added right we get the output now let's break down the statement 
Here we begin the print function with the usual text within double quotes, the value of a is part, right? Once you use plus, it is used to join or concatenate text and variables. Then we concatenate another piece of text using plus, which is ya in this case. You notice str bracket a, right? We type cast, yes, you've heard that, I know. We type cast the integer a to a string, which is done using this str bracket a. We do this because Python both receives the input and gives the output on the screen as string type. Even when you take an input, which we'll do in the next video, you have to type cast to your desired type, say integer, because again, Python takes input and gives output on the screen in string data type. Please remember that, right? You have, uh, you're encouraged to play around taking up uh, printing more complex statements like you get in your lab sheets, right? Uh, thanks a lot. If you have reached this slide, I'm really grateful to you for watching the whole video and hopefully you found the video to be informative. We'll look at input next. Till then, have a great time. And if you like the video, please share it with your friends. I won't mind if you offer me a lime sometime as well. So have a great time. Enjoy your post T2 period. And thanks for everything.